This is the Tandy Leather Ohio Briefcase. I'm Ted with Legacy Brand Leather, and I'm going to show you how to make it. Let's get to it. This project is in partnership with Tandy Leather. Tandy sent me one of their new kits, the Ohio Briefcase, and I'm going to walk you through how I put this together. They have a bunch of great kits on their site and in store with various levels of difficulty, utilizing different techniques and tools. What's great about these kits is that you can customize some of these projects with dies and hardware. They come with all the pieces cut to size and detailed instructions. Before we start working with the actual leather, we're going to cut out all the paper patterns. First step is the handle. We're going to start by marking all the stitching lines before transferring all the stitching holes to the leather. Using a wing divider, we're going to mark all the stitching lines. And with an awl, we're going to indent all the stitching holes. And then using our pricking irons, we're going to hammer out all the stitching holes. Then burnish all the exposed edges using your preferred burnishing method. Using a round knife or an edger, we're going to be scabbing the tabs on the handle. And then using your preferred adhesive, we're going to be tacking this together and stitching it up. Using some thread, we're going to force the curvature into this handle and tying it together. Next up is the handle plate. This connects the top flap to the handle we've just constructed. Using a wing divider, we're going to mark all the stitching lines again and transferring all the hole marks onto the leather of the handle plate. Continuing with the rest of the top flap, we're going to transfer the pattern details to the handle connectors, the strap connectors, and the straps. Using an awl, we're going to transfer all the hole marks onto these pieces before hammering them out. Burnish all these pieces with your preferred burnishing method. From there we're going to keep working on the top flap and mark where the handle plate will sit on the top flap as well as the holes for the strap keepers to stitch the flap to the back piece later on. The pattern is pretty self-explanatory, just transfer all the details of the holes and the stitching lines. and burnish the exposed edges of the top flap with your preferred burnishing method. Now it's a matter of hammering all the rivets. These rivets secure the strap keepers and the handle plates before we stitch the handle plates to the top flap. Now it's just a matter of hammering all those rivets together.
Once that's done, we need to work on the back piece. This is where we're going to be transferring the stitching holes to the back piece. Tack up the flap to the back and stitch them both together before securing the straps to the back with more rivets. Once again, we're using the pattern to mark all the holes for the rivets as well as the stitching holes. I'm using a surface rougher before I apply some adhesive, which will help keep the top flap and the back piece together while I'm stitching. We're going to jump to the front now and start working on the front pocket. Keep in mind if your hardware is going to be using the magnetic strap construction, like mine, or a traditional buckle construction. Both patterns are available. With the magnetic strap construction, I'm using the hardware to mark some indents into the leather before using a knife and securing these to the leather. Now it's time to assemble the front pocket to the front panel by transferring the stitching holes and stitching it up. I'm transferring the holes using an awl from the front pocket onto the surface of the front panel to ensure that this lines up correctly. To connect the front piece and the back piece together, we're going to be using a gusset. To ensure that all these align together correctly, we're first going to mark the center holes on the front and back panels, and transfer stitching hole marks into the leather and counting all the marks before hammering our stitching holes. And then, doing the same thing to the gusset so that we're not left with any extra or missing holes.
we're going to practice our folding of the gusset on the paper pattern first before we work on the actual leather. Now it's time to assemble the gusset to the front panel. As the instructions suggest, I also recommend that you use some stitching needles to ensure that the corner stays together while you're stitching up the gusset. Once the bag is all stitched up, it's time to start sanding the edges before you bevel and burnish. And that's it. Now, if you haven't dyed your leather for this project, you can leave this as is. Or you can do what I'm gonna do and use some mink oil. The mink oil will help condition and darken the leather a bit. And then I'm gonna put the bag in the sun and then oil it again and do this process a number of times before I check back in on it in a few months time or a year. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something. Please check out this kit or some other kits at your local Tandy or on their website. These kits are great to expand your skill set and also make for great gifts. If you happen to make this kit, I would love to see it. So go ahead and tag me on Instagram at Legacy Brand Leather and go ahead and give me a follow there. Also, please follow Tandy Leather. They have great resources for supplies, tools, classes, accessories, hardware, you name it. Please hit that like button if you like this video and please subscribe. It shows me that you want to see more videos and more content like this. If you want to support my channel, head to patreon.com forward slash Legacy Brand Leather. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe out there.